As I'm sure you're quite aware by now, a new ship released to Star Citizen a couple of weeks ago. With no quantum drive and just about the smallest profile in the whole game, it's not your normal ship. Sure, it may be decent at fighting, but what is it actually for? This is going to be a critical look at the new Mirai Fury, but it's also going to be a look at how ships like this, the 85X, the Merlin, and the Archimedes could actually end up being useful in the future, and why the game isn't quite ready for them just yet. If you're looking for a chance to win a 400i exploration vessel as well, stick around until the end. And thank you for coming to my Tomato Talk. The Mirai Fury looks different from most ships. The size, the general shape, the thrusters. This isn't your typical ship. You may notice some similarities to the Xion made fighter ships like the Car 2 All. These alien ships are flyable by players, but are made and primarily piloted by the alien species, the Xion, who are still not in the game. And while the Fury looks like a couple other ships we know and love, it's still an original idea, I think. We went over this last year, looking at some of the other ships you could say have some lookalikes in the industry. But the necessity of a functional interior and physical storage for everything requires some pretty interesting design choices with these ships. The lack of many maneuvering thrusters being on this small fighter leads to that Xion alien technology being leveraged for greater maneuverability. This is a good example of lore driving gameplay, something I just covered in an exclusive video I put out a couple weeks ago. I'll leave that link down below if you're interested. This anti-gravity and non-contact technology is only obtainable by MISC because of a special deal they have with the alien species, so this ship really couldn't have been done by any other company. The same tech can be seen in the Car 2 All, the Santok Yai, and the Gatak Raylan. While very easy to disable and render the ship unflyable, these thrusters are the highlight of the ship, both in design and functionality, and they are held aloft inside some of the coolest wings I've seen on a ship in this game. The angular overall design of these wings reminds me quite a bit of an Aegis or Anvil fighter, but the subtle curves in the bends, the folded over fins, and the general shape give me some strong Crusader vibes as well. All while taking cues from MISC such as the large overhanging piece up top and the bulbous glass cockpit. It's an overall creative design with a decent amount going on for it in a package that's smaller than just about anything else in the game. And with four size 2 repeaters and four size 2 missiles, it's a lot of fun to fight with. And the visibility is almost unmatched. Flying in this with an eye tracker is pretty exhilarating. The view from the cockpit when fighting reminds me of the Sabre, which also does its best to try and blind you with laser flashes. The heads up display is placed similar to the Prospector, and I appreciate the continuity and design taking cues from MISC, but maybe the two top corners would have been better for visibility's sake. And then of course, there's the size. Being a snub ship, this thing is meant to be carried around by others. Throughout my own testing of this functionality over the last couple of weeks, this has proven to be a frustrating part of the process of using this ship, but we'll talk about that more later. The ship itself comes in at about 7 meters long. It's absurdly short for a spacecraft. It folds up to land in an even smaller footprint than it flies too. This means it can be stored in anything from a Nomad, to a Cutlass Black, to a Caterpillar. Of course, all the way up to the largest carriers. There's a huge advantage to this kind of storage potential we'll talk about in a bit, but taking advantage of this in Star Citizen today might not be worth it for most players like it will be tomorrow. While it could be your sole ship for making a living in the game as a hired gun or escort pilot right now, the game just isn't ready to support that easily. Lately on stream I've been attempting to play Star Citizen without flying any ships, making this even more clear. Generally, you'll discover people are not quite ready to hop in game with the expectation of bringing somebody or their ship along with them, even if they know each other. There are still some obstacles to just making that process happen smoothly. The Fury itself is an awesome one-person combat ship that players should probably be looking into as a third or fourth option, considering they won't even have a quantum drive to travel around the star system. It can be really cool with a group of friends fighting against enemies together, but when it comes to efficiency of use, it's not the combat ship to get at the moment. At least, not in my opinion. But that doesn't mean the ship isn't useful. Don't forget, ships in Star Citizen are not just for us. Snub ships are likely going to be one of the most exciting complications in ship combat whenever AI forces are able to properly utilize them. 
Imagine this, you and your org are out in deep space attacking the Xeno threat Idris that's trying to invade Stanton, only for 10 Furies to pop out and rebuff your ships. That would be just one way these ships could be useful in making the game different in the future. Let's take a look at several other ways that the game will expand to make use of these snub ships. Snub or Parasite ships have existed in Star Citizen for a while, but have never really been a focus due to a few things. Physics grids and desync have always caused problems with ships inside of ships. While this has been improving over the years, it can still be a pain when combined with the relative jankiness of precise movement, meaning loading these ships and other ships can be a frustrating task. Services like refueling, repairing, and restocking have been impossible outside of landing pads as well, requiring a very long process to try and get more fuel out in deep space. You're either going to have to bring somebody out with a Starfarer to fuel you up, or load back into your ship and fly all the way back to a space station. And to add on to these two problems, it's also just kind of hard to get ships together right now. Not only has Star Citizen not really emphasized the idea of ship carriers in-game just yet, it's also just a pain to get all of the ships together for a mission right now without the ability to spawn ships inside of other ships. So given the time it takes, the players you need, and the ship commitment you'd have to have for these trade-offs, there really hasn't been much incentive to practice the carrier ship style of gameplay. And with the release of the Fury, that kind of remains true. But there is hope, and a lot of it. Looking at the current push in development, things like small towns, settlements, and AI ground vehicles jump out as ways to localize gameplay and require less quantum jumping to experience multiple missions. But we've also been seeing a lot of unique new space and asteroid points of interest pop up in recent previews of Pyro. Commentary at the time makes an emphasis of the small areas that may need to be traversed by smaller ships. Just like with ground vehicles, expect the game to curate certain areas to require these smaller ships to traverse fully. On the opposite side of the scale, play space is expanding with the addition of Pyro. Due to fuel limitations and risk factors in the system, players are going to need to develop new strategies around gameplay in Star Citizen. The Liberator was introduced for this very reason of transporting ships. Refueling, snub ships, bed logging, and player transportation are all important game elements that will likely see a focus as the game space continues to expand with Pyro. Scanning in Star Citizen is signature-based. This means a ship can be masked by obstruction or inclusion. So if you have an Idris with 50 Furies in it, a long-distance scan and even an initial short-range scan could only return an Idris. This is already a functional mechanic in the game, but because the user experience of scanning is actually pretty poor, it's rarely utilized. This and other forms of stealth will greatly benefit snub ships, and are going to be interesting wild cards in larger scale gameplay we have yet to see in game. One of the biggest factors of this ship that was pointed out by my friend Algorid over on the Info Runners channel is that this ship was referenced previously as an escort microfighter meant for the Hull series. While there's no sign these ships can latch onto the Hull series cargo plates, Maybe a small hangar or docking mechanism will be implemented into the larger line of ships. We have seen them get sucked into gravity wells on things like the Starfarer, but there's no knowing how that will progress in the future. Either way, this is another sign of the increased need for adequate and easy combat escorts among players as we expand into pyro, adapt cargo missions, and witness a rise in piracy. Finally, their willingness to even make ships this small I think points to a future of many possibilities. We previously thought the Argo Cargo would be the premier ship for loading a whole series ship, but a Fury-sized ship with tractor beams would appear a better option to me. Mining, salvaging, cargo maneuvering, a lot of areas of this game could benefit from small helper ships with no quantum drive that you can carry around with you. Or they could just get those drones in-game working for us. Either way, the ship is yet again an implementation of something exciting that could potentially change up the gameplay of Star Citizen, but the supporting features and missions aren't quite there to make the addition of this ship anything more than another ship. It's a cool ship, overshadowing the Merlin much like the Cutter overshadowed the Mustang, but there's no telling how the hype will fade with this ship's launch after the first month. And like with most ships, it's really going to be hard to judge the actual usefulness until we can see heaps and loads more gameplay added, and all the ships properly balanced. 
Until then, if you'd like to keep getting updates on Star Citizen, make sure to subscribe here for gameplay news, feature deep dives, and looks into the development of the game. As a supporter of the channel here or on Twitch, you'll also get an extra exclusive video every month looking at things like reappearing features like hover mode, a full report on the last four years of development and the ship backlog, the plight of the no-ship player which we talked about today, and most recently how the lore of Star Citizen is actually helping to drive gameplay. We also host behind the scenes videos, and at certain levels, we'll put your referral code into our referral code randomizer so you can get some referral perks over on the Star Citizen website. If you want to help to support us, consider signing up. And if you'd like to win a 400i exploration ship in the game along with a copy of Star Citizen, we just started our June giveaway. Every month offers a new chance to win something nice on this channel. All you have to do is enter in the link below. And you can also find the secret code I left somewhere in this video to turn in for additional entries. All supporters will get all of those secret codes before the giveaway ends. I hope you learned something new in this video, and I'll see you in the next.